from Jack Mashin Stadium, the home of the Foothillers. This is Grossmont Hills League Girls Varsity Soccer. Hello again, everybody. I'm Greg K. Porter. For GK Sports, we're at the game. Let's give you the uh, stats as far as, or the rankings, I should say, as far as the county is concerned. First of all, Cathedral Catholic is 7-0-4. Cathedral Catholic is 7-0-4. Their number one, number two is Benita Vista at 10-1. Number three is Eastlake at 9-1-1. Number four is Torrey Pines at 7-2-5. Number five is Christian having a fabulous season, 14-1-3. Number six is La Costa Canyon up there in La Carlsbad, 9-2-1. Academy of Our Lady of Peace is 7-2-4. They're number seven. Number eight is Westview at 8-2-2. Number nine is San Marcos. They are 8-2-3. And number 10 is Coronado at 9, 1, and 3. Let's take a look at other rankings. For California, Clovis North out of Fresno. They're undefeated. They're 10, 0, and 1. Number 2 is Harvard Westlake out of Studio City. They're 9, and 0. Number 3 is Clovis. They're 10, 2, and 1. They're third. Number 4th is Martyr Day out of Santa Ana. They're 10 and 1. Fifth is Santa Margarita out of Rancho Santa Margarita. They're 9 and 2. Sixth is Temecula Valley out of Temecula, 11, 1 and 2. Seventh is Santiago out of Corona. They're 12, 1 and 1. Eighth is Buchanan out of Clovis, 7, three, seven and 3 is their record. Ninth is Etiwana. They're 12 and 0. And tenth is Cathedral Catholic down here in San Diego at 7, 0 and 4. Those are the top 10 for the state of California. And we will go to now the uh, rankings for the country. And that is going to be uh, Providence Day. They are number one out of Charlotte, 16-0. Number two is Westminster out of Atlanta, Georgia. They're 19-0. Number three is West Forsyth out of Cumming, Georgia. They're 17-2. Fourth is Blessed Trinity out of Roswell, Georgia, 13-1-1. Fifth is Johns Creek. They're 18 and 1. Six is Lambert out of Sewanee, Georgia. They're 18 and 0 with two ties. Seventh is Vestavia Hills. They're 18 and 2 out of Alabama. Another Alabama school, Oak Mountain out of Birmingham, Alabama area. 15, 2 and 1. Ninth is St. Pius X Catholic out of Atlanta. They're 16 and 3. And tenth is Walton out of Marietta, Georgia. They're 14 and 2. Those are the top 10 in the nation. Let's go to Division One. Division One standings. The top ten is again Cathedral Catholic, of course, at seven and zero, with four ties. East Lake nine one and one. Torrey Pines seven two and five. Costa Canyons nine two and one. Fifth is Academy of Our Lady of Peace in Division One. They're seven two and four. Sixth is Westview eight two and two. Seventh is San Marcos eight two and three. Carlsbad is 6-2 and 4. They're the number 8 spot. Number 9 is Del Norte. They're 6-3 three and 3. Tenth is Valhalla. They're 6-1 and 3, having a great season. The rest of it in Division 1 is Bishops out of La Jolla. They're 8-1 and 2. El Camino's 12th. They're 6-4 and 1. Thirteenth is Granite Hills playing tonight against Grossmont. They're 4-4 four, four and 3. Fourteenth is Poway. They're 5 and 6. 15th is West Hills, 8, 7, and 1. We're going to see them next week. Scripps Ranch, we already saw them. They're 2, 5, and 7. They're 16th. 17th is Canyon Crest Academy. They're 3, 7, and 2. Steel Canyon, we're going to see them next week uh, on next Friday. 5, 6, and 3 they are right now. 19th is Rancho Bernardo. And 20th is the Foothillers at 2, 6, and 1. And the Foothillers may very well end up in Division Two next season by nature of their record. We're going to see what happens. That has happened before since GK Sports has been broadcasting for them. Take a look at Division Two. Christian, I mentioned before, they are 14-1-3, and three, the uh, number two team. Number one is Benita Vista. They're 10-1. and one. Third is Mission Hills out of San Marcos again, 8-0-2. Point Loma, 
is fourth at 7-2-4. and four. Central, we saw them last year, the Foothillers did. They're 14-1-1, one one, having a great season. Sixth is Francis Parker, 5-2-3. Uh, and three. Martyr Day down at Chula Vista is 5-6, and six, they're seventh. Eighth is Mission Bay, 5-3-5. Five, and five. That's the school where the Foothillers won the CIF division title last year. Patrick Henry, they didn't play Mission Bay, but that's where they wanted that. Uh, Patrick Henry, 6-3-3. Three, and three. Uh, the Cabers just lost to them the other night. And 10th is Otai Ranch. They're 5-6-1. And, and the Helix, the team that the Foothillers just played, they have a 1-3-3 three, and three record. They're 11th. San Diego Academy out of Encinitas is 5-6-4. They're 12th. 13th is San Diego. Uh, the Cabers playing tonight. Last I looked, it was a nil-nil uh, score with La Jolla. Mount Carmel is 6-4-3. and three. They're 14th. 15th is Olympian at 3-5-1. Mission Vista out of Oceanside is 17th. La Jolla is 18th. That's a school that uh, the Cabers are playing tonight. 19th is Fallbrook at 5-4-4. Four and, four. and 20th is San Pasquale in Division 2. So those are the rankings for Division One, and Division Two, the California rankings, and the nation rankings. We'll have more for you at halftime. About ready to have the final messages from the coaches and get ready to get the ones, this one started tonight. Foothillers ran into two things on their last match. And I don't usually say this, but uh, it was a confusing, to be kind, a confusing ref last uh, game. And a lot of drop balls, more than I've ever seen in any soccer match, professional or otherwise. And two of the goals scored were confusion goals. And Next thing you know, the ball is into the back of the net. Foothillers, maybe at best, could have only come out of with a scoreless tie. Or maybe they would have only given up one goal, but they ended up losing 2-0. And ironically, that was the second straight game that they played up at Jim Arnais Field where they lost 2-0 to them. Lost last year and lost, or last season, and they lost again this season. So the Foothillers have found success right here at Jack Mashon Stadium this season. And they were able to beat El Capitan 4 0 and be able to beat Steel Canyon 4 0. But the last game they played here was against Valhalla in a tough one. They scored two goals, but lost three to two. So tonight is going to be a game where they can see, they're going to try to see if they can not allow as many goals and stay in it close and maybe come out with at least a tie or a victory. As far as getting in the playoffs, I haven't heard officially that they're out, but if they are still in and hanging by a thread, they cannot afford to lose any more games. Let's get the lineup for Grand Hills. Kaylee Alon, she's a sophomore. She's double zero. Macy Vance is number one, the junior. Number two, Zandri Nichols. Number three, the junior, Lauren Francois. Number four, the senior, Bridget Cooley. Number five, the sophomore, Kelly Cahill. Number six, the sophomore, Valerie Soto. Number seven, the freshman, Carly Harward. Number eight, the senior, Isabella Kamahi. Number nine, the senior, Ava Gatta. Number 10, the senior, Angelica Kamahi. Number 11, the sophomore, Ireland Irvin. Number 12, the sophomore, Brittany Holden. Number 13, the sophomore, Alexis Bowers. Number 14, the sophomore, Carly Zanger. Number 15, the junior, Shannon Hedgecock. 16, the senior, Emma Goritz. Number 17, a freshman, Brooklyn Bromberg. Number 18, Aiden Geyer. She's a senior. Number 19 is freshman Kelly Finnison. Number 20 is freshman Mackenzie Bramley. Number 21 is a sophomore, Brooke Laflasse. 
or La Falce, I think that's where I pronounced it last time over there at their place. Uh, Sadie Churchill is a senior, number 22. Number 24, the junior, Andrea Silva. Number 25, Abby Olivers. She's a freshman, 26. Freshman, Aubrey Francois. And number 88, Anna Obenruder. She's a junior. And that's your lineup for the visitors tonight who won the last match between these two teams. Of course, the Foothillers, I didn't mention their lineup the last time. And we're going to go ahead and do that for you real quick. Sarah Stanley is double zero. Sarah Lopez is injured. She's number one. Number three is Isabel Curtin. Number four, Bridget Wilson. Number five, Jennifer Giavingo. Number six, Tula Payan. Madison Smith is number seven. Taylor Aguilera, number eight. Number nine, Grace Torriorella. Number 10 is Larissa Neal. Number 11, Kayla Sassina. Number 12 is Juliana Baistruri. Number 13, Carly Kennedy. Number 14, Cecilia Roses. 15 is Montserrat Zamora Herrera. 16 is Brie Cooney. 17, Olivia Hunter. 18, Sarah Funk. 20 is Mia Tillett. 21, Ashley Austin. 22 is Kirsten Funk. 24 is Layla Salazar. And the keeper is Danielle Michels, double zero. I haven't been mentioning her name, unfortunately. That is a oversight on my part, but that is, has ended as of today. And she came up from the JV and has done a fine job, really, in pitching in for Natalie Emery. So the team in white, the Granite Hills Eagles, will be going from right to left. And left to right is going to be the Foothillers. Trying to get a home win. And one where they cannot afford to lose anymore if they're any kind of hope of squeaking into the playoffs. Shift colors for all you sailors out there, past and present. We are underway. In the back, pressure by Austin. Didn't see her in the last game, but she is in there tonight. On it is uh, Aguilera, and trust me, these two teams playing the last time this season. They know each other very well. It's a Brooklyn, it's a um, Grossmont Hills lead game. Sent in the central. Coming out with it, the Eagles. Into the central, they, they have it. Kirsten Funk runs on to it. Kirsten Steele is on it as she gets a return pass. Madison Smith. Little heavy touch that time. Gigi Vico on an early ball to uh, Austin, and Austin is able to stop herself right in front of Vance. And Vance gives that ball out to their her left, and it is going to be out of play on the near side. Grab a snack and a beverage on a Friday night, and this one, of course, you will see it on a Saturday, so do the same thing but it's a Friday night match here it'll be three next week for the Foothillers right two of them right here at Jack Mashon Stadium and then one on the road to finish the season at Steel Canyon unless of course they somehow get into the playoffs but a lot of work to do to even have a thought on that one Bree Cooney dropping it back. And I say the fact that there's a lot of work to do. You saw the some of the records. There is, there is still that chance because of the fact that some of the records have not been very good by some of these teams. So even though they've lost a lot of games as at this point where they would normally be in a little better situation, a lot better actually the last couple of years. Still have a shot at it. As they want to get the uh, the 
Stands on the far side of the action. Madison Smith now. And Smith sends it forward now towards the keeper. And Vance just lets it go past the goal line. Neil Neil, your score. Just the opening 13 minutes or so of the match. Goes out of play. Eagles will get it into play. Playing on the road. Here at Grossmont High School. The border of La Mesa and El Cajon. After the whistle, there'll be a free kick for Granite Hill. On a chilly evening in May. Mother's Day coming up, so I'll say Happy Mother's Day to all those out there that are mothers. I know I had a great one when she was on this earth, so I know a lot of great mothers out there are doing a fine job and dealing with tough times here in the pandemic. Doing the best they can. So hats off to you. Tomahi will throw it in. Kirsten gets it over to uh, Taylor. Curtin. Austin. Pass intercepted on the near side. Sandwiches Curtin. She does get it to uh, Jen. Giavingo's pass to Austin. Across the field to Bridget Wilson. Bridget. Continues to go out even further. We couldn't get it to Tortorella. So the Eagles have it. They collect. The Foothillers have reduced the size of the field. Intercepted. And sent up field. And it is out of play. Still nil-nil is your score. It went nil-nil against Helix in the last match for a whole half. And then things happened in the second half to change that, the nature of the match and the final score. But Illers have had a tough time on the road this season. But they're at home tonight. One more at home than they've lost. Of course, they hadn't played a lot at home in the save by Michels. So now they're going to try to take advantage of that late in the season. They got three straight games at home. Here's Kirsten Funk now on the move. Funk, her pass will cut off. Rosas sends it down the right flank to Austin. Chips it back. Can't get it to uh, Taylor. The throw in by the Eagles. Trying to buy for it was uh, Gia Vingo. She didn't get it. It goes off of Austin. And it'll be a throw in. <laughs> Isabella Kamahi throws it in. They go back up the field in their defense. And now having to chase it down is Zandri Nichols. She gets to it and gets it going upfield. Foothillers with Curtin looking for a through ball and trying to get Smith and she could not get to it. She was shielded off from the soccer ball. Upfield, the Eagles have it at midfield now. And it whizzes by Taylor Aguilera and all the way out of play. So it'll be a throw in for Grossmont. 
We had the boys game right before this one. All these athletes trying to get their sports in before the end of this calendar year, school year. And I might add, have done a great job at it. Hats off again to the athletic directors. We've got a couple more hats off before the night's over, but I'm going to, for now, talk about the athletic directors. What a job they've done here in California trying to make this stuff happen. Because at one point, didn't even know if there was going to be high school sports at all. Here come the Eagles now, trying to thread the needle and not able to do so. So it'll be a goal kick as Michels will get it, will leave it for Funk to take care of it. Saw her drive that ball all the way up to midfield at Helix. And drive it a long way. Off of one player, but running onto it is Nichols. Nichols time and space. Nichols sends it upfield now. Nichols got a runner on the right flank. That's Cooley and the shot and the save by Michels. Gets it up into the air. The keeper over to Austin. Austin couldn't handle it, so going with it upfield. The Eagles now, and it is snuffed out at the last moment by the uh, Foothillers. But they still have it in the attacking third. Gorentz dropping it back. Out to the wide. Madison Smith staying on the ball. Been pressured heavily, but uh, it was taken away from her by Kamahi. And it goes out of play. It'll be a throw in for the... Grossmont Foothillers in their home field, Jack Nashon Stadium. Greg K. Porter, happy to be with you. For GK Sports, we're at the game. Throw in for the Eagles of Granite Hills now. And they have a player that's free. 1v1 with a keeper and a goal. Holden, who scored, I believe, in the last game, gets one in this one, and it's 1-0. Holden worked her way free and split the center defenders, and then she was 1v1 with the keeper. That was an issue in the last game, and it cost the Foothillers a couple of goals, and then it's cost them one tonight. 1-0. Still a lot of time in this match. To try to come back. Here's Jennifer Janvingo on a run on the near side. It is snuffed out, but it's going to be a throw in. And Jennifer Janvingo Gen doesn't waste any time. You sit a soccer ball, gives it to Taylor Aguilera. Aguilera chips it into the central, looking for Smith now. And it is sent out of play. Foothillers will throw it in, trying to get the goal back quickly. Remember, I score, they have scored four goals twice this season at home. In fact, they were down uh, by two goals in the last game, and it came roaring back and fell short by one. Three to two. That against the Norsemen of Valhalla. Here is uh, Funk. Funk is challenging the dispossessor of it. Smith comes into the play, and it's a good challenge that time. But the Eagles have it, and they'll go up the field. Down the right flank now for another quick play of a counterattack directed at the Foothillers now. It's going to be a shot, and it's not a good one. It's too high. 1-0, the Eagles of Granite Hills enjoying the lead here in the first half. 
Still a lot of time in the first half. 27 minutes counting down. Stadium clock working here was not working at Helix. In other words, nobody was working it. Me, myself, and I in the booth. Goal kick coming up, Kirsten Funk. Upfield, Madison Smith got a deflection, but it goes into her defensive half. And here come the Eagles now. Bridget Cooley, a nice pass into Central. The center defenders being pressed into duty, and that's Roses coming out with it. And it's out of play. Elio Bello knows exactly the way to attack the Foothillers. This version of them. And he wants to continue to do that and see if they can continue to have success. Foothillers have to tighten up in the back. There is a foul, and that foul is going to work against Granite Hills. And it'll be a free kick now for Grossmont. Subscribe to us at GK Sports on YouTube. Just throw it in the search. Turn on the bell notifications. And anytime we have a sporting event, we're going to have a lot of youth sporting events coming up in the summer. So you want to subscribe so you can see who's playing at what time. Just turn on those notifications and it'll tell you. We like to do live streams with youth uh, sports outside of high school. So we plan on doing that again this coming summer. Bridge a gap between the high school season, which is going to be a short scenario this time around. The shortest in a long, long time. Nobody alive has seen the last time this happened. Although this school has been around since 1920. One of the oldest schools in the county. wasn't at this site totally, but it's one of the oldest ones. The Cavers, the oldest original site school in San Diego County. Ball's going to go out of play, and it'll be a throw in for Granite Hills. It is one nil affair. No substitutions that I see, but they're going to come soon here. Upfield for Funk to Taylor Aguilera. out of play the foothillers will throw it in they'll do it from the far side of the field Madison Smith all the way down the central now trying to see if they can get a strike against Macy Vance that's a hunter who's into the match right now remember she scored in that penalty kick right here at Jack Mashon Stadium against Valhalla her first goal that I've seen her do as a varsity soccer player. And that was a convincing penalty shot, too. She's a senior, going to try and see if she can add more offense to the scenario and help the Foothillers try to get some more victories here. Close it out for the 20 20. 2021 pandemic delayed season playing in May of 2021 throw in now intercepted by the Eagles but intercepted again by the Foothillers here's Curtin now turns around tap to the central Jennifer Giovingo now 
to the near side. The shot is a good one. The rebound, and Hunter just couldn't quite get to it. Nice shot by Madison Smith, but Hunter came right at the keeper after the rebound. Just couldn't get a hold of the soccer ball without actually contacting the keeper, and it wouldn't have been allowed that time. But a good offensive play, and here they come again now. With it is Smith. Smith looked back for Curtin, and she wasn't there. Smith comes over and takes it away. Nicely done. Still on the soccer ball, or actually gives it to uh, Jivingo. To Curtin now. Curtin on it now. Sends it into the area, but Hunter not able to run onto that one on that through ball. So Vance will get it started. Didn't get much of a good boot. And so now Jennifer Giovingo heads it forward. Can Smith run onto it? She does. She stumbles, regains her balance, tries to get back to it. It is sent out of play. And the foot hillers will not be able to throw it in and say it was off of uh, Smith. So it'll be a throw in for uh, the team in white tonight on the road. The Eagles of Granite Hills. Of course, the sun being clouded up now it makes it a lot better with the film. On the move is Smith. Giovingo to the near side. Hunter is not going to be able to get to that. 1-0. Brandon Hills with about half of the first half left to go. Center ref has the official time. If I mention times, it's not necessarily accurate because the player gets injured. It's not accounted for. Center ref has that accounting of the time. Knocked out of play, and it's going to be a throw in. Let's see, there's a whistle, and. It's going to be Bridget Wilson coming out of the match. And Pion Tula is into the match. The senior. Throw in now by Taylor Aguileta. Heavy touch that time. So Granite Hills have possession across the field. Goes out of play. Bridget Cooley couldn't handle it. Throw in now by Austin as she switched to the far side of the field. She'll get to throw it again as they knock it out. Giovingo trying to control it. It's going to be a throw in for Rosemont. No, and then he changed his mind and it's going to be a throw in for Granite Hill. Upfield. Foothillers retreating back, trying to get to the soccer ball. And they are finally able to get to it and send it back, going in the offensive direction only momentarily as it's taken away in a midfield area. Bridget Cooley now on it. Cooley looking for options. Sends it to the central now. Now it's Kamahi. Upfield now, and they'll have another strike into the central. They get numbers forward. 50-50 ball taken away by Pion. Nicely done. Pion now, and near side for Hunter. Just a fraction above her speed to get to it that time. Giovingo has it now, and the attacking third now to Curtin. And Curtin not getting a good strike on the soccer ball, and it goes out of play. So Vance will get it started with her defender.
Daly Obello has some players standing next to him. He'll probably get him in the next time he has a chance. Upfield. Foothillers on a tap by Hunter over to Giovingo. She couldn't hold on to it. Up forward on an intercept. Center defender will drive it forward for Granite Hills. And here they come. Down the central, over the top now. A player is almost free. And coming off her line nicely was Danielle Michels. Michels gives it a ride. And then it goes, falls to the feet of Aguileta, who plays it forward for Jennifer Giovingo, trying to run onto it. It is sent out of play. It'll be a throw in for Grossman. But first, there'll be a substitution as Olivia Hunter is going to come out of the match. With pretty good work rate while she was in that time. Very close to getting that equalizing goal. Kayla Cecina is into the match now, number 11 in blue. Tula plays it forward to Smith. She didn't hold on to it. Giovingo tries to get it. There's a foul, and it's going to work against Grossman. So they'll have a free kick. Still enjoying the 1-0 lead. In the match. Driven on a line drive. Intercepted nicely by Roses. And it goes out of play. Roses kept it from getting behind her. And here comes the host of players coming in now for Elio Bello. And the center ref says, hold on here. They need to get off the field first before they come on. Just so you can get an idea of exactly how many are coming on and who are coming off. Twenty six twenty five. That's uh Francois, the freshman is into the match. This one is over at Michels. And she gives up a rebound now, but gets to it. Another freshman, Abby Oliver, is into the match. Oliver is 25. In white. And there was another player that came on. We will mention her as touched that soccer ball. Near side, that ball is up to Giovingo. She fell down, and it goes out of play. There's quite a few players falling down in that last match against Helix. Got pretty physical late in that match. Foothillers are used to it. It's just Grossmont Hills League play. Granite Hills, they're used to it as well. Last time they were here, they got three goals on the Foothillers. And were able to beat the Foothillers 3 to 1. That was over a year ago. Well, actually, the last two times the Foothillers have played. Granite Hills, they've seen Granite Hills score two goals and three goals the last two times. So trying to not allow that to happen tonight. In the last match between the two of this season. The far side, the Foothillers with Austin. Her pass is cut out by Bridgie Cooley. Cooley sends it. Off of Austin, it trickles towards the center of the field. 
Now trying to run onto it is Pion. It was a sandwich effect, but they weren't able to get it away from that time it was uh, Gorant. Ball out of plate. It'll be a throw in now for Granite Hill. Cut out again, nicely done by the Foothillers. They want to go on a quick counterattack. Gingia Vigo wasn't able to get to the soccer ball. Intercepted in the back. Now to the wide side. They want to try to get away from Funk. Putting all kinds of pressure on the back line and uh, save is made. Kirsten Funk now is going to get it started. Around 11 minutes left to play in the first half. But Hillers was plenty of time still left here in the first half and in the second half to try to get the equalizer. And as I chronicled in the beginning of the telecast, they really need to win every single game at this point. The wiggle room is basically gone. Unless a bunch of other teams lose games as well that are in contention and still allowing the door to be open. But I don't see you getting in the playoffs if you don't have at least five victories. It would be highly unusual. Foothillers have two right now. Granite Hills in the central. They'd like to continue to put the pressure on the center defenders if they can. Macy Vance comes off her line and is able to sweep that ball out of play in front of the on rushing. Kayla Cecina. Taylor Aguilera, the senior, is going to throw it in. Had a fine career at Grossmont High School. Even if not making the playoffs becomes a reality, she still had a fine career. So is Jennifer Giavingo, who's near the ball right now. Madison Smith trying to get a pass going. I'm sure they would have loved to have been a part of this team. She's a senior. She's only going to be with them these last few games. Cecina on the near side. Cecina takes a shot and not a problem for Vance. Vance will drive it upfield. He intercepted that time by Pion, and Pion is still on it now. Pion sends a through ball now. Cecina just can't continue on. A good defensive play that time by Kamahi. Senior knows how to make good defensive plays for Granite Hills. Had to do them the last season against Granite Hills. I mean, against the Foothillers in the CIF title game. In a close game. Foothillers winning the title, but very close game. Penalty kick was different. So I didn't mention the amount of goals scored. In the very last time these two teams played each other. So then just take it as GK Sports, and there's a whistle. And it's going to be a free kick. 
A little urgency in that whistle by the center ref. Vance gets it back upfield. And they'll be able to throw it in. Time running down in the first half. Only seven minutes on the stadium clock. Or maybe just a fraction more. Let's see, where is the word fractions coming from? Ah, yeah. Wasn't too bad at that in high school. On the run, Madison Smith, and on the back side, and they just couldn't get a strike on it. Nice strong run by Madison Smith, and a good low shot. Into the match now is uh, Andrea Silva, the junior. For Granite Hills. Nice move that time by Bree Cooney. Goes to the outside. Cecina now on it and drives it behind frame. Macy Vance gives it to her defender to get it started this time. Brandon Hills content to try and see if they can hold on to this 1-0 lead. They see opportunities, they'll take them, but they know the foothillers are the ones that have to try to come back. Every time it goes out, it's an advantage for them. Collision on the far side. Funk still on the soccer ball, turns and drives it upfield. Her teammate tried to make a play on it. Cecina could not do it. And so now, a pass, a through ball attempt. Taylor Aguilera cuts it out. Aguilera gets it again and gets it to Bree Cooney. And just getting back with Zandri Nichols. Because that ball, if it takes a little bit more of a speed move on Zandri Nichols, then Jennifer Giovingo is going to be in on the keeper. Roses. Ion trying to get to it, so is Aguilera. They cannot. So Granite Hills with a through ball, but nobody's going to be able to get to that. And the keeper, Michels, has it. For Grossman. Danielle looking for options. And decides to roll it out to Roses. And that becomes troublesome now as Granite Hills, they have possession now. Trying to hold on to that possession and they can't do it. Well, now they get it back again on an air pass by Jennifer Giovingo now. And they got a player on the left flank that's free and the shot and the pass up in the air. They want to get a header now to try to put it in the back of the net and they can't do it. Nice defending that time. A scramble defending by the Foothillers. Get to the soccer ball. And it will be a free kick. Center ref says, wait a minute. Before you strike that soccer ball, he thought Giovingo was going to do a quick kick. Inside three minutes left to play in the match. The first half of the match as... Vance makes the save. I know you don't see the timer on your raw feed. 
some point down the road when this turns into the second copy, you will see exactly how much time is left. Info at TCT forwards or dash slack uh, tax dot com. That's dash tax dot com. Info at TCT dash tax dot com. Days are running out for the extension. Getting your taxes done. You're going to take advantage of that. Get in touch with TCT Tax. They'll take care of it for you. You got bookkeeping needs, new business, get in touch with them as well. Again, it's info at TCT, that's a slash, uh, tax.com. If I said slash, meaning dash. Kind of confusing there, so it's a, it's a dash. And later on, the, the uh, actual moniker will be on the videos. So it will not be as confusing as I am delivering it to you. There are advertisers. There will be others joining down the road. And other videographers down the road as well as announcers as we may very well have another school joining us in the fall all of that is in the works here's a drive and it's too high to fall into the back of the net And hopefully it'll be live streaming come next season for your foothillers. I'm sure that is the plan. First time not live streaming it since we've been filming. The Grossmont Girls Varsity Soccer. Upfield. Rosas gets to it. Sends it off of Jennifer Giovingo. So Granite Hills will send it forward. Trying to utilize the last moments of time left and still be in the lead. Rather keep it going forward rather than in their half of the field. And that's the end of the first half of action. The goal by Brittany Holden and it's 1-0 for Granite Hills. After the first 40 minutes of action, check out the highlights of the first 40 minutes of action. And you can do that on the second copy right now. Throw in for the Eagles of Granite Hills now. And they have a player that's free. 1v1 with a keeper and a goal. The freshman is into the match. This one is over at Michels, and she gives up a rebound now, but gets to it. Now they get it back again on an air pass by Jennifer Giovingo now, and they got a player on the left flank that's free, and the shot and the pass up in the air. They want to get a header now to try to put it in the back of the net. Shift callers for all you sinners out there, past and present. As we are just about ready to get underway here in the second half. 1-0, Granite Hills. They are going from left to right and right to left. Are the foothillers no keeper changes? And we'll see what happens here in the second half. We're underway. Jennifer Giovingo sends it to the far side of the field for Kirsten Funk. Brittany 
Wilson, not Bridget Wilson. I want to say Brittany, but it's Bridget. Not able to get to that soccer ball. The pass was uh, away from her. She's closer to it now, along with Jennifer Giovingo, and Jennifer Giovingo steals it and gives it to Madison Smith. Smith on the run now. Smith on the near side, being guarded heavily. Or mark, as they call it in soccer, and it's sent towards the central. Mia Tillett now going after it. Mia Tillett, and there is a collision, and it's going to work against Granite Hills. So it's going to be a free kick. Tillett will not take it. She'll leave it for Bree Coo Cooney. Let's see what Bree Cooney can do with it now. She can strike it far and hits it well up in the air. And Vance is able to get up in the air and make the save. Very good strike that time by Bree Cooney. Early ball now, trying to victimize the foothillers now, their back line. Remember, they had the speedster last year. That's exactly what they did to the foothillers in one particular instance. Foothillers trying to erase what happened last year against them. Right here at Jack Mashon Stadium. Of course, they. Ended up getting the measure of satisfaction, like I said, in the Division I championship. I was able to chat with the Parents of Mia Foster here in the audience watching the game. She's one of the stars of that team from last season. Ball out of play. Pass the goal line, so it's going to be a goal kick. Vance just made a nice save. Kept this game one nil deficit for the Foothillers. On a rather chilly night, chilly May night, out here in El Cajon, the border of El Cajon and La Mesa. In this Grossmont Hills League match between the Foothillers and the Eagles of Granite Hills. Early ball, no problem, as Michels comes off her line. Danielle looking for options, and a former JV keeper. Upfield, 50-50 ball, it falls to the near side, and Granite Hills, they get the possession now. And they'll move with some pace now towards Michels, and she makes the save again. Has done very well. Not worrying about a striker coming at her. Happened in the last game with Helix. And she stayed, stood tough. Dealing with on rushing striker. Got to be able to do that as a keeper. Tough duty when you have to. Part of the job description. Grand Hills with possession now in their back. Is it working to midfield? And this one is cut out by the Foothillers upfield. But Hiller's trying to defend back there and make sure that ball doesn't get behind their last line of defense. And here they go on a quick counterattack. Yeah. 
Free kick now coming up for Granite Hills. Enjoying the 1 0 lead. 50 50 ball, Madison Smith. Actually, that was Stanley over there. Early ball, Roses getting to it. Kirsten Funk. Jennifer Giovingo runs onto it. Back to Roses. Roses' pass intercepted. Austin. But Salazar working with it, dispossessed. And now coming over there is Roses on a fine play, helping out Funk. So it'll be a throw in now for Granite Hills. Elio Bellows' team has got some work to do here in the second half to try to secure the victory. But they're ahead by a goal right now in a more favorable scenario. So it's getting the result. Into the area now. Headed forward by the foothillers of Grossmont. Sent toward the central. Giovingo just couldn't quite get it. And there's going to be a foul on that play. There's a reason why she didn't get it. Upfield looking for Smith. Not quite able to get it, but it comes to the near side. Bridget Wilson's pass. It's deflected. Giovingo can't run onto it. And so a quick counterattack by Granite Hills. Comes over to the keeper, it gets away from her, and it gets behind her into the back of the net. Does it count? It does not. They were offside. Nearly down 2 0. The Chronicles in the first half, the Foothillers trying not to give up that second goal against the Eagles. Gave up the second goal against uh, Helix in the second half, and that was to their undoing, not able to come back, and a foul. So Granite Hills now with a free kick. Bridget Cooley will take it. Let's see where she goes with the soccer ball. Getting some instructions. And Cooley chips it. It's stamped out. Cooley has it again. Cooley turns now. But Hillers have it. Good defending, Bridget, or uh, Kirsten Funk that time, and Funk's pass was intercepted. But now Cooney back to Roses. In the central. Launched at Michels, and she makes a save. Hillers in their own defensive half have to make another play again and Michels comes off her line and makes a nice save. Michels keeping him close. Danielle decide which direction she wants to go with the soccer ball. It's going to go off to her right. Gave it away but running onto it is Funk. Drives it forward now for the runners. They can't get to it. Way off her line was Vance. 
Reducing the size of the field. Here is Bree Cooney. Funk. Cut out at midfield that time. Was till it, but they're able to retrieve it. They get it to Smith. Madison Smith now double teamed and it's out of play and it was off of Madison Smith. Work rate has been fabulous this season. And she really appreciates the sentiment. Especially being new on this Foothiller team. But obviously she's been doing it for another high school somewhere. Or a club team, because she's a senior. Foothillers have it in their defensive third. To midfield. They have possession now with Jennifer Giovingo. Turns, sends it to the near side. Bree Cooney now. Early ball for Bridget Wilson. She got a strike on it and continues to go after it. It's going to be past the goal line and it'll be a corner kick. Thought it would be a corner kick, but he's pointing to the spot like it's going to be a goal kick. And so that's exactly what it's going to be. Upfield. Kirsten Funk coming up. Reduced to the size of the field now. Funk now on the soccer ball. Chips one over to Madison Smith now. Smith takes a blast. And Vance is going to be able to make the save off that bounce. Madison wanted more onto that shot. Didn't get it that time. Maybe create a rebound, a better rebounding scenario. Back the other way, trying to defend. They got a striker there and a rebound does happen. And it happens off of Michels that she's able to stay with it. A little bit better tonight than it was against Valhalla. And unfortunately, late in the game, not able to stay with that rebound. And they gave up that third goal. And had that not happened, they would have came out with at least a tie against a team who was playing very well this year in the Norseman. Would have really helped the Foothillers cause towards getting into playoffs this season. But as I mentioned, they may very well have a blessing in disguise where they can play at a division that is uh, lower next season. And the last time that happened, they were able to win it and they made their march to win even the higher division than the following year. So we'll see what happens. For you Foothiller fans, all may not be lost when you look at the aggregate of what may happen in this calendar year. However it goes. Now in the central. The shot and Vance is able to stab that one out on the low side. Coach Fernando Ramos employing his girls to continue to work. But now they have to get back because a shot is going to come at the keeper and it's behind frame. One nil, about 25 minutes or thereabouts left to go in the match. Still time. Foothillers don't want to wait until it gets towards the end to try to get that goal. Again, like I say, that they did against Valhalla.
Going to be a throw in for Granadales. Check out gksports.org. That's where this game is going to be on tomorrow. The raw feed is what it's called. gksports.org. Up at the top of the page is all our social media sites. Facebook, around the clock. Max Preps and professional um, posts. And also our Instagram that's been outstanding lately. Interviews from the Cabers game today with uh, either player or coaches. Here's a shot and it's just wide. Along with the conversation on Twitter. So check us out at gksports.org. And then maybe if you have a team that, uh, club team that you'd like for us to film them, get in touch with us. That's the place to do it. Of course, always subscribe. Throw in GK Sports on the search of YouTube. Turn on your bell notifications, and you will know when we have a sporting event. And trust me, it's not always going to be soccer. There's going to be some other sports coming along. So you want to turn on those bell notifications. You want to subscribe. 50-50 ball to the near side. Trying to get it is Bridget Wilson. Wilson is working hard and does get the soccer ball. Bridget Wilson trying to make the turn. Will make a pass and it's intercepted. Giovingo just could not bring it down that time. And there's going to be a foul in his face. So a free kick now for Granadil. Granite Hills trying to do like Valhalla did and beat the Foothillers twice in a season. Neither team could do that last season. Trying to do that this season. I was mentioning about uh, this has been a week of uh, lauding certain people out in the community. And this has been a week where the teachers have been lauded. And the fact that they enrich the lives of so many students. My parents were teachers. And hats off to you. Dealing with all of this stuff during the pandemic. And trying to get your students educated through a virtual scenario, which most of them had never had to do before. So hats off to you the teachers out there. And hopefully maybe you can have full classes, at least here in California during the, the fall. Hopefully around the, around the country, but California is doing very well towards trying to get to a percentage of herd immunity that, that just might work, but we'll see what happens. Going to be a throw in for Granite Hills. Not in a hurry, as you can see. They're enjoying the 1-0 lead. They'll take chances to try to add to it. Here's another chance of trying to do just that. On a near side, Funk. Working hard, gets to it. Been a stalwart. You want to talk about Madison Smith and her work rate. Kirsten Funk has played very hard this season in the back. Sometimes, maybe too hard, but she really has worked hard back there as a defender. And that's another new player on the team this season. Not knowing the foothiller way. Coming on and trying to gel with the rest of these new players. And done a really good job at that.
Fred Hillers offensively just have not been able to, to make it work like they have in the past. At least since we've been filming them. And that one was almost headed in the back of the net. Fred Hillers fortunate on that one and it goes out of play. Foot Hillers are running out of time now. Still have time, but they have to really begin to think. You've got to start putting more pressure on Granite Hills. Let's see if we can get one into the back of the net before it gets to be nervy time. So relaxing time. They still have a little bit of it, not much more. And then the nervy time will come. Austin, into the match. Cooney, up forward. Player goes down for Granite Hills. Cross the field. Play is snuffed out. Mighty foot -hillers. Stanley into the match, double zero. About 18 minutes left to go in the match. Grossman has kept it close. Found a way, got some fortune in and have played well enough cover for each other to do that. Now they have to find a way to put one into the back of the net. They need at least a draw out of this match. Cannot afford to take another loss. Aguilera now being pressured and sends it out of play. The senior, Angelica Kamahi, was on her backside trying to make a play. Going to be a substitution is going to happen for Granite Hills. On the substitution, that was uh, Kelly Cahill into the match, the sophomore. Of course, the coaching staff making them aware of what they're trying to do. Try to salt this one out. Elio Bello, he knows exactly what to do. And his team, he's going to do just that. It's up to the foothillers to try and not allow it to be a scenario. Again, the comfortable time is still there, but nervy time continues to get closer and closer. And it's one nil affair here at Jack Mashin Stadium on a Friday night. Foothillers, Kirsten Funk will throw it in. She'll wait for her teammate, Smith. Get back into play. Wilson. Looked like she was being held up that time. No call. Stanley. Nice play into space. Bridget Wilson will go try to chase it down. Won't get there. Across the field now. Granite Hills. Tried to get it was Austin. Could not. And Granite Hills still has possession. In the near side with Cooney. Cooley now being pressured. Up in the air. Stanley now. Nobody in front of her. And she'll go try to get it and could not. But she forced a 
sending the ball across the touchline. And so now they have the attack continuing to go. A whistle left field, and they were off sides. The foot hillers, so it'll be a free kick. For the different shades of blue, Granite Hills, the Eagles, still ahead 1-0 on the goal by Holden in the first half. The header by the Foot Hillers. Trying to run on to it is uh, Wilson. Does so. Stanley sandwiched that time. They take it away from her. Send it upfield. Aguilera not able to keep it in. Every time it goes out, it works for the Eagles. They'll take a 1-0 victory on the road. Foothillers have to try and find a way not to let them do that. If they're to enter, entertain any remote hopes of getting into the playoffs. Cooley will throw it in. Early ball, throws this and allows it to fall for Michels. Must have been an offside and it'll be a free kick. Foothillers, Givingo leaving it for Austin but Austin could not control it and so Coming back at the Foothillers now, and this one is sent off target. Foothillers touched it last, and it'll be a corner kick. Uh, 12 minutes left to go in the match. Give you that time because you're watching the raw feed. You don't know. This one is a good uh, ball, and it's in the six yard box. They're going to take a shot. They'll take another one, and it's going to go to the back of the net. A goal! Go, 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 go! by number four. 2-0. Bridget Cooley getting the goal. Angelica are uh, actually in the match now. Or the Foothillers is uh, Rissa Neal. Foothillers are going to have to try and catch fire like they did in their last match here. Trying to get two goals. Can they do it? They need to get at least a draw out of this match. Wilson. Smith. Shot. It's deflected. And Vance. And it was offside. And a yellow card now in two straight games now with the Foothillers. Of course, they had two in their last game against at Helix. Coaching staff had one and a player had one. And then now in this game, Madison Smith draws one. So she substituted for... And has 
has to be careful when she comes back in. It's not the worst thing in the world to play one player down. But usually it's an advantage for the other team. Just depends on the competition that you're playing. And the nature of the game as well. But if you're in a tournament, it can really bother you if you get a red card. So you, that's the reason why you usually don't want to go there. Because in the kids' tournaments, you're not coming back to play in the rest of that tournament to get a red card. Attacking third, Granite Hills. Just worked their way in the six yard box, had numbers, and were able to get Bridget Cooley to put one in the back of the net. And in the first half, he was uh, holding scoring that goal. And 2 0, Granite Hills. Eagles on their way to trying and beat the Foothillers twice in a season. Good passing, a shot, a save by Michels. Nice job that time. About seven and a half left to play in a match. It's definitely a nervy time now because the Foothillers are down by two goals, vice one. A couple of fresh players come in now for Granite Hills. Throw into the six yard box and Michels on the carom is able to collect it. Danielle, try and get it as far as she can upfield. Granite Hills, they have possession, but then they give it away. So it'll be a throw in now for Grossmont. get this one right for you. 17th is that deadline. The remaining deadline to get your taxes done. So it's info at tct tax.com dash tax.com See them to try and help you get that done. They can answer all kinds of tax related questions or other questions related to those types of finances and making sure that the IRS doesn't try to seize your belongings and stuff. Check them out. Upfield. Bridget Wilson now trying to make a move. They take it away from her. She gets back to it. Bridget Wilson now sends a ball upfield and out of play. Inside five and a half left to play in the match. 2-0 Granite Hills. But Hillers will play two in a row next week right here at Jack Mashon Stadium. And then they will go to Steel Canyon to conclude the regular season. And the way it's looking right now, that's going to be the season. Helix and West Hills will be 
coming to town. Helix on Monday and West Hills on Wednesday. Steel Canyon next Friday. Let's see their setup that they have for the first time since the last time Foothillers were there. As far as the press box and all that is concerned, I think they done something with it, extended it from what I understand. Get a chance to check that out next Friday. Kirsten Funk. Brandon Hills getting a hold of it. And they keep their possession. Send it all the way upfield. It eats up time off the clock. And it makes the Foothillers have to chase. And a deflection. It didn't go in the right direction now. And so they're in a box with numbers. Trying to put pressure again on the defenders or and try to get a good shot. They didn't get a good shot that time. But they did put pressure and they ate up time off the clock. So two of those three things worked out for them. And now we're closing on three minutes left to go in a match. Smith is coming into the match. Madison Smith. Bridget, Bridget Wilson looks like her night might be done. She comes out. Elio Bello makes a couple of substitutions on his side. Madison Smith now. Drops it back. She's fresh, so if they are going to make a run in these last remaining minutes to try to win this match, or at least to try to get a draw out of this match, winning might be a little bit too much. She's fresh to do that. And it's going to be a free kick now for Grossmont. So let's see what they can do with Kirsten Funk. She's going to take the free kick. Smith has to be careful. Remember, she has the yellow card. And it is snuffed out on the near side. The Foothillers, Jennifer Giovingo, we're going to try and see what they can do here. Two minutes extra time. As you just heard, two minutes left. Here's the chip. The header goes in the wrong direction. But Roses keeps the possession. Now Bree Cooney tries to do it, and they take it away from her. Upfield. And they got some speed while they're doing so. And one of the Eagles players lose her balance. Put Hillers down. Out of their own defensive third. Time running down in this one, and... Jennifer Giovingo now has it. Cuts it towards the central now. Giovingo now. Double teamed. Tried to get it to her teammate, and that didn't happen. And so back with it is Granite Hills. They played a good controlled match. Put pressure on the back line when they needed to. Found a way to put it in the back of the net. And by virtue of all of that, looks like they're going to get the victory tonight. Foothillers have been shut out four times this season, and this will be the fifth. GK Sports has not seen that with Grossmont until now. In four years. This being the fourth year. They've been blessed with good offensive production in the past. And not for lack of effort this year. Just not able to make a lot of runs and 
possession really count in the attacking third. And a lot of that is because their star player, which they counted on, got injured. And so the offensive woes have continued. And if you look at any team that has a star player, they are going to suffer, either offensively or defensively. Here's a shot and a goal! Go, 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 go! Madison Smith puts it into the back of the net. And the late magic at Jack Mashin Stadium happens again. The lead is cut in half. It is two to one. They don't have a lot of time to try to get an equalizer. Cannot really let it be in their own half of the field if they want to get the equalizer, the result. Woodillers now trying to keep possession. Foul on the play, and it'll be a free kick. And that's the end of the match. It turns out to be a 2-1 scenario. They do not get shut out, and they do put one into the back of the net, but they lose this one to Granite Hills, 2-1 at Jack Mashin Stadium. We hope you enjoyed the match. And don't forget to watch this one tomorrow on gksports.org. Again, the social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're all there. So join the conversation, um, like us, follow us on those websites. Of course, you always want to subscribe to see what we're doing. Turn on your bell notifications, throw GK Sports in the YouTube search, and subscribe. So... In another match where a foe of the Foothillers is able to sweep them in a season, it's Granite Hills doing so just like Valhalla. Three games left next week, and the Foothillers will be back playing Helix again on Monday night. And you can watch it on gksports.org on Tuesday. Of course, one more uh, thing, don't forget. Info at tctax dash. It's info at tct dash tax dash dot com. And go ahead and get your taxes done. You don't got much time left if you got that extension. Bookkeeping, all the needs are right there. Get in touch with them. From Jack Nashville Stadium, final score two to one, Granite Hills. So long, God bless, and happy Mother's Day again to all those mothers out there. Throw in for the Eagles of Granite Hills now, and they have a player that's free. 1v1 with a keeper and a goal. Swamp, the freshman, is into the match. This one is over at Michels, and she gives up a rebound now, but gets to it. Now they get it back again on an air pass by Jennifer Giovingo now, and they got a player on the left flank that's free, and the shot and the pass up in the air. They want to get a header now to try to put it in the back of the net. 50 50 ball it falls to the near side, and Granite Hills, they get the possession now. And they'll move with some pace now towards Michels, and she makes the save again. That's done very well. Foothillers in their own defensive half have to make another play again, and Michels comes off her line and makes a nice save. And for Giovingo turns. Sends it to the near side. Bree Cooney now. Early ball for Bridget Wilson. She got a strike on it and continues to go after it. 
It's going to be past the goal line. This one is a good uh, ball, and it's in a six-yard box. They're going to take a shot. They'll take another one, and it's going to go to the back of the net. A goal! Go, 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 go! Uh, good passing, a shot, a save by Michels. Nice job that time. And if you look at any team that has a star player, they are going to suffer either offensively or defensively. Here's a shot and a goal! Go, 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 go! Uh, Madison Smith puts it into the back of the net. From Jack Nashon Stadium, final score, two to one, Granite Hills. So long, God bless.